What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Let's get to the show. And for those of you that have been begging for iPhone 6 news, well, we have a whole bunch starting with a report from Reuters that displays for the next gen iPhone could go into production as soon as May with Japan Display, LG, and Sharp all tapped to make the screens. They report the rumored 4.7 inch is likely to be produced first, while the 5.5 inch version could be delayed several months due to manufacturing difficulties. Now, both screens are expected to use the thinner in-cell display technology, and it makes no mention of a sapphire-based display. Also, everybody loves the Foxconn leak, and images posted on website Weibo show a purported iPhone 6 under testing at Foxconn. Fake or not, the images and schematics here appear to show a slightly protruding camera component with a thinner iPhone body. And the Big A is also in talks with chip maker Renasus Electronics to acquire them for their smartphone display chips. Renasus SP Drivers, the division they're trying to acquire, is the leading producer of drivers and controllers for small LCDs, and their tech is already used in the iPhone's current LCD screens to improve both its sharpness and battery life. Probably a good thing after Samsung's Galaxy S5 was just rated by DisplayMate for having the best smartphone display ever tested. Now, it still remains a mystery how Apple is planning to use its Sapphire manufacturing plant in Arizona. Will it be for the iPhone or the iWatch or for both? Well, Apple Insider reports that the United States Patent and Trademark Office recently published an Apple patent for oleophobic coating on Sapphire. Now, that's the oil repelling coating Apple has touted in the past and first introduced with the iPhone 3GS which did not stand for three grossy smudges. Now it's a multi-layer process with a base sapphire layer, a transition layer that bonds the surface layer to the base, and finally the oleophobic coating on the top. But with iPhone displays rumored to be in production by other manufacturers in May, the sapphire plant could be just for the iWatch, you know? It's just an idea. And there are plenty of iPhone 6 concepts out there to drool about, so take a look at this one. Based on Japanese magazines, Mac fans published alleged schematics for the next iPhone. Now, iPhone rumor mill artist Martin Hajek took the schematics one step further and created his own 3D iPhone Air renderings. They feature a thinner body, rounded edges, and a rounded body itself, but don't get too worked up. This isn't the real thing, but it might be really close to it, and we're still expecting the iPhone to drop sometime in the fall. All right, now competition is always a good thing to be aware of, and this recent week was a big one as Amazon officially unveiled their Fire TV streaming set-top box that includes a remote with a microphone for voice-controlled search, automatic recommendations, gaming, and claims that it's three times as fast as an Apple TV with its quad-core processor and two gigs of RAM, all for 99 bucks. Now, there's also a Bluetooth game controller accessory for $39, and they'll be developing their own games, but I don't think Gary Busey is going to convince me to buy this. If you're like me, you like talking to things. Hello, Lamp. Hello, Gary. See? But it's frustrating when things don't listen, especially high-tech things. You know, he's really not going to convince me to buy anything. Now, it's a product that I like. It does different things and it stands out from the pack if you don't already own a streaming box. So we'll see what kind of response Apple has. And Microsoft Build recently held their own keynote in San Francisco and they unveiled the new Windows Phone 8.1. And the biggest addition is their own voice assistant, Cortana, after the famed Halo artificial intelligence who was the emotional hook for Master Chief. Welcome home, John. Heart. Now Cortana will not look like this on your phone, that's too bad, but one thing she already has on Siri is the ability to operate with third party apps, actual apps and not services, and that's one thing that Apple has still held back from its developers. But if you're showcasing a new Windows phone hardware, Nokia, don't promote a phone by pretty much ripping off the same exact commercial for Apple's iPhone 5C, that's just stupid and that's not even a commercial worth ripping off. So here's Nokia's, or Nokia's for you purists, and here's Apple's. And that's a bad Apple. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll catch you guys next week for another bite of the apple.